I want to welcome you into, uh, you know, this um, this meeting at this hour. And we thank God for that which the Lord has begun to do and will do. Of course, you know that this is the first Sunday, Covenant Sunday. And in Covenant Sunday, the Lord speaks to us about his will for us, about what he plans to do in the midst of his church, even at this time in this month of November. Praise the Lord. And, you know, of course, Covenant Sunday comes, you know, from <clears throat> the scripture that the Lord gave unto us in Exodus chapter 34, verses 27, verse 27 for, the, for the purpose of those who will be listening to us for the first time. The Bible says... In verse 27 of Exodus chapter 34, then the Lord said to Moses, write these words, for according to the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. Praise the Lord. And, oh, and then, of course, verse 28 says, so he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And of course, in this month of November and I pray maybe the Lord will continue even with this thing with us in December because this time is a significant time and I want to say that this month of November is the month of intercession the month of intercession hallelujah hallelujah and we have already started praying and we will pray until until you know we see the manifestation of God we will pray until something happens Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Let's turn our scriptures, our Bibles, to the book of Isaiah chapter 59. We're going to read some scriptures and then we're going to, go, we're going to do a bit of appraisal and we will pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah 59. The Bible says in that chapter 59, we're dwelling on verse 16. The Bible says, Then the Lord, so he saw, okay, let's read from, okay, let's read from verse 9. The Bible says, Therefore justice is far from us, nor does righteousness overtake us. We look for light, but there is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in blackness. We grope for the wall like the blind. And we grope as it as as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday, as a twi as a twilight. We are as dead men in desolate places. We all growl like bears and moan sadly like doves. We look for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. And as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, justice is turned back and righteousness stands afar off. For truth is falling in the street and equity cannot enter. So truth fails and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey then the lord saw it and it displeased him that that there was no justice verse 16 he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor praise the lord when there is no intercession unrighteousness and acts of wickedness prevails unrighteousness and evil will increase in the midst of the church will increase in the world at large praise the lord the bible says in that verse 20 uh, th verse 15 It says, truth fails, and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. What does that tell you? 
it has come to a time when if you stand for truth, you become a target. Be it whether you are in your workplace or you are in the church or you are in the midst of your families. Be it whether you are in the midst of colleagues, in the midst of fellow businessmen, wherever you are, whether you are a politician, if you stand for the truth, you become a target. That is when evil and wickedness increase. And the Bible says the Lord looked, the Lord saw, the Lord was displeased with the situation that he sees in the world. The Lord is displeased with what he sees in the church. When the Lord looks into the church, he sees backbiting. When the Lord looks into the church, he sees absence of love. When the, Lord look, when the Lord looks into the church, he sees those who are striving and not mindful of what the will of God is. When the Lord looks into the church, he sees evil increasing. And of course, when the Lord looks into the world, he sees evil increasing. And the Bible says, the Lord saw and it, dis it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw there was no man, that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. And what this tells us is that intercession Intercession goes a long way to curb works of unrighteousness. Intercession goes a long way to expose acts of unrighteousness. Intercession goes a long way to unravel the will of God and the mysteries that are hidden. To mortal men. Praise the Lord. And so in this month of intercession, there is a lot that the Lord would have us to would have us explore. And there is that which the Lord will have us do. Praise the Lord. In this month of intercession. 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 If we look into the book of Abacock. Abacock, praise the Lord, chapter 1. The same thing that we saw in that Isaiah chapter 59 was the same thing that became the experience of Abacock. But you see, in Isaiah chapter 59, what we saw was the revelation Isaiah had about God's displeasure because of the evil that prevailed as a result of the absence of intercessors. But here we have a personal experience of someone that was being drawn by the Lord into the act of intercession. The Bible says the burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw he had a burden. He saw a burden. Listen, there are many who have called themselves today because of what they want to get from the calling. There are many who have called themselves as men and women of God today because they want to be notable. Because they want, to, they want to be praised. Because they want to benefit. There are many who call themselves 
but do not have burden. If there is anyone that the Lord will call, such a person will have a burden. The burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw, we are talking about the personal experience of someone here. And that may also be your own personal experience. Because you see, the Lord will call one person, two person, three person, and from different walk of life, the Lord will begin to call people, the Lord will begin to move the hearts of people into intercession. And the Lord is doing it at this moment. The Lord is tearing up the hearts of the church towards intercession in order to stop the flow of evil works in the church and in the world. The body in which the prophet Abacoc saw, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear and, and cry out to you violence and you will not save? Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before her, before me. There is strife and contention arises. Therefore, the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, perverse judgment proceeds. The body of Abacoc. And you see that when the body, when the body, like a mantle, came upon him, he had no rest in his spirit. When the body came like a mantle upon him, the Bible says. He began to cry out. He began to cry out. And the more he cried out, you know, the more he wanted this violence to be taken away. The more he wanted this unrighteousness to be taken away. The more he wanted this evil that was prevailing to be curbed. Praise the Lord. And the more he cried, it was as if the, the, the evil works were, were still there. And he was praying and he was asking God, God, why do you show me this? Why do, you, why do I cry? And you will not hear me. But of course, the Lord wanted him to pray more. Where there are intercessors, where there are intercessors, evil works will begin to decrease. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, in verse 15. Okay. You know, if we read from verse 12, we see the Bible says, Are you not from everlasting? O Lord my God, my Holy One, we shall not die. O Lord, you have appointed them for judgment. These are the people that he, he talked about from verse 5. Praise the Lord. He says, but for you, the righteous one, because of intercession, the Bible says, we shall not die. Are you with me? Intercession stays the hand of death. Intercession stays the hand of death that the, that the enemy determines upon a man when the, time of the, when the time of that person has not yet come. I'm not talking about when the time of that person comes. But when the time of that person has not yet come, intercession stays the hand of the enemy. The Bible says, Are you not from everlasting, O Lord my God, my Holy One? We shall not die. O Lord, 
you have appointed them for judgment. O rock, you have marked them for correction. Did you see that? You see, it's either, it's either those who, who, those who, who, who prevail in doing works of evil, works of wickedness, it's either they are judged or what? Or they are corrected in order to return to righteousness. Praise the Lord. But one thing is certain here. Intercession has its place in the midst of the church. And we all, we need to relearn. We will need to relearn the acts of intercession. Let's look into the book of Acts. Acts. We are setting a background and the Lord will help us. The book of Acts, praise the Lord. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. The Bible says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that he pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now, it was during the days of unliving bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Verse 5. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Intercession. Intercession. As we said, when we looked into the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk says, we shall not die. We shall not die. When evil, when evil increases, when evil increases, you know, it, it, it goes after children of righteousness. When evil increases, its purpose is to weaken, weaken believers. When evil increases, it, its purpose is to weaken believers. And those that are strong are either taken away from the shores of this world so that they can easily target those that are weak. Praise the Lord when evil prevails but the bible says abacog said we shall not die but instead for us to die it is either the lord will appoint these people these people this these messengers of wickedness it's either god will appoint them for judgment or the lord will correct them As he corrected Saul on his way to Damascus. It was intercession. When Stephen was taken out, the church prayed. Are you with me? pray that the Lord will give us understanding. We stir up our hearts. Give us the strength to follow through. Ah, in the name of Jesus. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer 
was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers. And the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. If there are any amongst us that are bound with chains, if there be any amongst us that are being constrained by acts of wickedness, if there be any amongst us that the enemy has targeted, marked out, in the name of Jesus, I command that chain to be broken in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever chains have held you bound. This minute, this hour, this moment, in the name of Jesus, let every chain be broken. If the intention of the enemy is to take you out before your time, to take you out before you complete your assignment. To take you out because you are one of the righteous one who stand for the truth. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will save you. The Lord will deliver you. The Lord will save me and deliver me. Intercession. 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 Because constant prayer was offered to God for Peter. Unlike that time in Isaiah chapter 59, when the Lord looked down and there was no intercessor. The Lord looked down and he saw people praying. He saw people praying. He saw that they were no longer complacent. He saw that they were no longer carefree. He saw that they were no longer just, you know, just professing something that they do not believe in. He saw the sincerity of their hearts. He saw that the people came together, not out of self-interest. They came together because of the love of God. They came together. They helped one another. And in oneness, they desired for the Lord to intervene in the affairs of Peter. And the Lord delivered him. The Lord delivered him. Of course, we all know, you know, we know the way Peter died. We know that he was martyred. Praise God. He was martyred. But you see, he already received that revelation when Jesus encountered him in John chapter 21. He knew the way he was going to die. But at this time, in Acts chapter 12, his time had not yet come. He had not completed the assignment that God had for him. He was, he was still soaring high in the midst of the church as the champion of the church.
and the enemy thought it would mess with him so as to weaken the church. James, his fellow brother, his fellow, his fellow champion, his co-leader, had already been taken out. But then the church suddenly woke up and they began to pray. No, it's not his time. But do you know something? They were praying. They were praying. Constant prayer was being made on his behalf. But even though they were praying, they didn't know how God was going to do it. And they still had that fear in them that he may not survive. And that was why when Peter was released by the, by the Lord, and he came knocking on the door. And the person that opened the door saw him and immediately went back to those who were praying and said, Peter is here. And they look at him. Stop talking nonsense. They look at her. Stop talking nonsense. Stop talking nonsense. But you see, intercession, intercession, Calls the attention of God. Moves the hand of God to do something. Sometimes when something is happening, God will, God will be looking. He will allow it. He will allow it because there is a purpose there. If he steps in, the church will continue to sleep. Do you not know? That you see, every time when the church when the church receives blessing from the Lord, when there is when there is you know when there is always inter intervention, when the church does not have problem, the church goes to sleep. The church goes to sleep, and the enemy encroaches in, and before the church wakes up, it's like the boiled frog syndrome. The boiled frog, uh, frog syndrome. You see, when you, when, when you have hot water, you know, a research was carried out. When you have very hot water and you have this frog and you throw the frog into the hot water, what's going to happen? The frog is going to jump out because it would immediately feel the pain. But when you put, when you have a lukewarm water, and you have um, you, you 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 slowly increase the the uh, the uh, intensity of the heat. So the the water you put the frog in the lukewarm water, and you slowly increase you, you know you slowly eat up the water, because the frog the frog is comfortable in the lukewarm water before he realizes it. The what the warm water would have become hot and it would no longer have the ability to jump out and save itself. Boiled frog syndrome. A lot of us are like that boiled, I mean, uh, like that frog that becomes complacent unto death. But when God awakens the church, if you look at the history of the early church, the church increases when there is persecution. The church increases when there is opposition. That's when they know how to pray. That's when they gather together and pray. Praise the Lord. Intercession. Now, what is the focus? Of intercession, we are going to you know inter intercession covers a lot of areas. We have seen how intercession, you know, intercession stays the hand of evil from increasing. We have also seen that intercession also can stay the hands of the enemy from killing people of the way, the church. 
Praise the Lord. Intercession also brings about the revealing of God's will for man. The revealing of God's will for man. In that Abacoc, you know, when he prayed and prayed, the Bible says, I mean, when he cried and cried in that chapter 1, then at the beginning of chapter 2, he says, you know, I will stand my watch. I will stand my watch. He had been praying, mind you. He had been seeking the face of God. He had been crying. He had been crying. But then he, he encouraged himself. And he told himself, no, I will continue to stand watch until the Lord unravels the mystery. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Write the vision. If the Lord did not give him a vision, there will be nothing to reveal. The Lord gave him a vision. And that was what the Lord says, write. Write the vision. Write the vision. That's what intercession does. That's what intercession does. Praise the Lord. Intercession. If you look into the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Praise the Lord. Nehemiah. Hallelujah. Chapter 1. Nehemiah chapter 1. Here was another man who had a burden. Bible says in verse 4, because of our time, so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. This is another act of intercession intercession you see when we talk about intercession it's a time of humility before the lord <coughs> intercession oh no it's not a time it's not a time you are praying god bless me bless me bless me bless me bless me intercession is the time that true prayer and supplication will bring down the hand of God into the midst of us. All other things will be added to us. For better understanding, let's just read that Nehemiah. Um, <laughs> Bible says it came to pass in the month of Chisley on the 28th year, verse 1, as I was in Shushan, the citadel, that Anani, one of my brothers, came with men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. You see the states, you know, there are many in his days who knew about this. Even those who carried, who bore this news and related it to Nehemiah. They knew about this. Praise the Lord. But you see, there was something different about Nehemiah. The moment he heard about it, God stirred up a burden in him. God stirred up a burden in him. May I say something this afternoon? You need to have a burden. I need to have a burden. 
If you don't have a burden, you will just be aimless. You will be aimless in your, in, in your, in your uh, life's journey. You will be aimless. And when you are aimless, you will be useless. May the Lord not help us. I mean, may the Lord not uh, let us be useless. May the Lord help us not to be aimless. Praise the Lord. We need burdens. It's burden. It's burden that awakens a man unto destiny. It's burden that makes a man to arise, to arise, to arise. And let me say this. Some of us may need to do what the prodigal son did. I will arise and I will return to my father. It is intercession that brings about such. Intercession helps to awaken those who are sleeping in the church. Intercession. Intercession stirs up the hearts of people. Unto purpose. You look at what the world is doing. The world is about how you can acquire as much as possible. And how you will run and not be mindful of your eternal, eternal, eternal um, glory. Your, your eternal acquisitions. Do you not know? That what you do for the Lord, what you do in Christ, has, has eternal reward. Praise the Lord. If you do not do anything for the Lord, then you cannot have, you know, a storehouse in heaven. The Bible says in verse 4, Nehemiah chapter 1, So it was... When I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Why? Because they brought news. They brought news that the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach, and that the wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. And the Bible says, and I said, in verse 6, verse 5, I pray, Lord of heaven, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenants and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments, please, 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 intercession. Intercession. Intercession calls the attention of God into the affairs of man. Intercession. <clears throat> Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear that that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night. No wonder the Lord used him. If the Lord is going to use you, then you need to have a body. Every other thing will be of less priority. Listen. Nehemiah abandoned. He abandoned the, the pride and the benefits of his position in the, in the house of the king. Because, you know, his assignment there, you know, had great prestige. He had the ears of the king and his household. He was a man 
He was a man that was highly respected. But you see, because of the burden in him, he chose, he chose to abandon that for a season in order to go and do the assignment of God. And so it was in chapter 2 when he approached the presence of the king with a sad countenance. And the king saw him. This is quite unlike you, Nehemiah. What's the matter with you? And he told the king. The Bible says in verse 2, chapter 2, Therefore the king said to me, Who, Why is your face sad since you are not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. Sorrow of heart. A man of burden will have sorrow in his heart. Until, situation, until the situation changes. May the Lord help us. So I became dreadfully afraid and said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city the place of my father's tombs lies waste and his gates are burned with fire. Then the king said to me, what do you request? Did you see what he did? So I prayed to the God of heaven. So I prayed to the God of heaven. Remember, constant prayer was offered to God for Peter. And this man also was an intercessor. And when the opportunity came, he quickly sent a prayer to the Lord before he answered the king. And then he said, May the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad? Okay, pray, praise God. Verse 4, then the king said to me, what do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. Verse 5, and I said to the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. We're going to conclude here. That's when you go into intercession, you cannot come out of the act of intercession without an assignment. When you become an, an intercessor, the Lord will give you an assignment. The Lord will give you an assignment and commission you for the work. And may I say also that when God gives you assignment, it doesn't matter what man says. You are not accountable to man, but to the Lord. And so it is not in your place to count the numbers. It is not in your place to look at what you are doing and compare it with that of others. Because every assignment is unique to the person. You must remember that after God had blessed David, the Bible says, you know, the devil came on him and he ordered that the people be counted. Go and count the people for me. I want to know the numbers. Go and count all that, you know, we have. And the Bible says, you know, they told him, why should we do this? But he said, go, just go and do it for me. And then they went and did it. It was after the result came that conviction came to his heart. And the Lord gave him, the Lord gave him three options. Three options. But David was repentant. 
He was repentant. He did not choose any of the three options. Rather, he went. He went into what? Intercession. Supplication. 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 You must be careful as we enter into this month of intercession and as we begin to seek the face of the Lord, as we begin to pray, as we begin to trust the Lord, as, be, as the Lord begins to speak to us, unravel mysteries, and do the things, the things that only Him can do in the midst of us. We must be careful not to make the mistake that David make, made. We must be careful to be humble at all times and to trust the Lord for our lives in the name of Jesus. We're going to start our prayers from the book of Acts chapter 1 because that's when power came down. That's when power came down. And our intercession, we start by focusing on power for the church. Power upon us, the Spirit of God, being evident in our lives. So get ready. Get ready. The time has come for prayers and intercession. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And so, on Friday, by God's grace, we're going to start focusing on this area of intercession. And then we're going to roll out a time of prayer. A time of prayer. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the very purpose of intercession. When the disciples came to the Lord Jesus, they asked him, they found him praying. And then they, got, they, they told him, teach us how to pray. And Jesus taught them how to pray. Because prayer, prayer is important. Prayer is, is, is the lifeblood of every believer. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you will stir up our hearts towards prayer. You are waking us to begin to seek your face in prayer and supplication. You will give unto us the strength even to pray, the strength to seek your face in the name of Jesus. And, O oh Lord, we ask that you will awaken the church. Oh Lord, we ask, oh God, that you will have mercy on the church. Oh Lord, we ask, oh Lord, for your grace upon the church. Oh Lord, we pray that righteousness will come to us in the church. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name. We thank you, Father for that which you will do in the midst of us, now and forevermore. Amen and amen in Jesus' name.